Welcome in, everybody, to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P., Joe Pizzapia, and it's Monday, and you know what that means. It's waiver wire time. That's right. We're going to hit the waiver wire for week three. We still have games going on tonight. Not one, but two, but it doesn't stop us from looking at the waiver wire, and I know a lot of you are looking to it because there were certainly some injuries to discuss, uh, certainly a big injury at the quarterback position, too. Trey Lance will be out for the rest of the season with that broken ankle. That news certainly changes the dynamic of that 49ers offense quite a bit. We're going to get into that. Derek Brown, D-Bro, a.k.a. the King of Bros, is with us today. And my good buddy, Chris Allen, is joining us. And if you haven't already followed this dude on Twitter, what the hell is wrong with you? Go to Chris Allen FFWX. That's the Twitter handle. Follow him. He works as a contributor of 4 for 4 Football, Football Guys, NBC Sports Edge, Established a Run. You remind me of me, Chris, where I was working 5,000 places. You were doing fantastic work, man. You are a grinder. I am so happy you're here to break down week three waiver wire with us. No, I'm I'm so glad I get a chance to come back and talk with you all again. Because, Joe, I mean, like we were talking last time, it's been a long time coming for us yeah. to get back together. And, Derek, we go back. How many years, brother? So, no, I'm so <laughs> happy we get a chance to talk ball as we roll into week three. Yeah, and so many weeks, man. So Debro, let me tell you, man. Like, uh, yesterday was for a lot of people who were very excited about the potential of Trey Lance in this game yesterday. I mean, you got to really got to talk about this. This is the big story, I think, going in. I feel like we should be playing that, like, boys to men song. It's so hard oh, to bro. say goodbye. We got to pour a little out for Trey Lance. And Jimmy Garoppolo's back, so... To me, the big the big thing I'm taking away, and I know it's not the trade show. I know that's tomorrow. But my whole thing is everybody should be going trying to acquire Debo Samuel. Because with Eli Mitchell out, Debo Samuel, I think, goes back a little bit more into that role now because you don't have that rush equity of Trey Lance. To me, I know it's waiver wire time, but trade time, I'm getting Debo wherever I can. What do you think? Oh, absolutely, man. And, if, and there's the people like after two weeks that are even like looking at possibly dropping Ayuk for any kind of sexy names in the waiver wire as well, which I know that sounds crazy, but to some shallow leagues, you could see this happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm totally into investing in San Francisco's offense. I think that there's there's equity to be had. We're going to talk about the backfield some, but as well as mm-hmm. Debo Samuel, because we've already seen the wide back role. It's back in full effect, baby. And now that the passing volume is going to come up with Jimmy Garoppolo under center, I'm totally with you, Joe. Now, what we're trying to do is give you the names at all the positions to add this week. And if you need extra help and, you know, it never hurts to get some extra help. The waiver assistant is here for you. It's a great tool over at my playbook to help you figure out who the players are that can help your roster the most, help your bench get a little beefier, help your uh, your main roster get a little stronger as well. Everyone else, I'm a wrestling guy, so I like to use the the, the (laughs) phrase main roster, but it's an easy way to find out which players to improve your team and by how much. So go to fantasypros.com slash my playbook now. And remember only premium subscribers get the most out of waiver wire assistant. So if you are not currently a subscriber, Go to fantasypros.com slash offers, make a small deposit, one of our partner sites. And just like that, you get six free months of our premium product that gets you access in our discord to us. It gets you access to stages. It gets you access to the premium products of fantasy pros, including waiver assistant. That's what you need to help you out. Again, that's fantasypros.com slash offers, and then check out my playbook or download the app as well. I love the app. It is spectacular. Our dev team is just absolutely crushing it, man. That app is just chef's kiss. I love it. Let's see if we love anybody to add this week. And let's start with the running back position. We're going to be using percentages from the Sleeper app. If you haven't already, move your leagues over to Sleeper. That is the place to be. It is a great app for all of your fantasy football needs. Uh, Let's start with Chris. You're our guest today. Give me the name of the running back you want to add most this week, how much fab you're willing to spend on them. And let's talk about the roster percentage and how available they might be. Sure. And I think the one that everybody's going to be looking towards because we haven't heard at least any concrete updates this coming out of Arizona after last week or last yesterday's contest would be Daryl Williams because James Conner, he goes out in like the middle ish part of the third quarter and then especially over the offseason, it was kind of a debate over, well, who's going to be splitting the touches? And we heard a lot of hype. Got a lot of smoke about Eno Benjamin and the coaching staff really liking what he's what they were seeing out of Benjamin, but it really was like Darrell Williams that came in. It was the very next play after James Conner went down. Williams comes in, gets a target, and then afterwards he hold, held on to a 61.5% like rushing share. He worked in on short yardage. Most of his work, I think like six of his nine carries that like came in on early down. So he had like most of the work and he checks most of the boxes of a running back that you would want. Like if you were able to grab him up off the waiver wire. The only thing is that he wasn't really mixed in like once they got into overtime or even in the two minute drill. But of course, if he's not a part of the weekly game plan, we've only played like two games, you wouldn't expect him to be involved in those packages yet. So 
let's wait and see like what the team says about James Conner and what his ankle injury looks like moving forward. But at the very least, you know what the running back rotation is going to look like should he go down again. And we've seen that in the past from Conner. So if for my money, at least let's say 10, 15 percent like of my fab, uh, my fab budget, if I can go ahead and grab a guy that's 9 percent rostered on sleeper, I'm going for Daryl Williams this week. All right, Debro, let's go to you. Who's your number one ad this week at the running back position? I keep bringing this name up because it's ridiculous. The fact that I know I'm violating the rules, Joe. I'm above 50%. I know. But you're the... such a rebel, though. I, I think everyone loves you so much. You, just, you, you refuse to bend to the man. That's what it is. Well, you know what? I just have to point this out because I think it's ridiculous. The fact that Brian Robinson is at 52% is is absolute insanity to Preach. me. We're seeing videos of him coming working out. We, he's on the mend. I think he's going to be back in short order. And Antonio Gibson, yeah, he had a great week one. He just stunk it up in week two. And he lost more of the routes to J.D. McKissick whenever they were trailing this week. So, okay, why do we not have Brian Robinson over 70, 80% rostered is ridiculous. It's absolutely insane because he could walk back into this backfield and be the starter as could. soon as he's 100%. That can happen. And yet he's still sitting on the waiver wire in almost half of leagues out yeah. there. It's crazy. It's only 50% rostered. I thought after last week's big monologue, people would have listened to it. Try. You know, I, I think it was Antonio Gibson's good first game where people got like, well, no, you know, I'm not going to waste it. I don't know. And look, some leagues in all fairness don't have IR spots. I think mm -hmm. some of that roster percentage being what it is, is probably you can attribute to that. Like, I think, you know, I think that might be a small percentage of reason why, but he should be rostered at this point because now you're getting closer and closer to a return here. We're going to be week three before you know it. You want to be proactive, not reactive. Um, all right, Chris, let's go back to you. Give me another RB. Who's your second guy you want to add to the position this week? No, I'm going to stick with that same backfield because I actually like the usage for J.D. McKissick like uh, just this past weekend because in week one, and like, like Debro was just saying, I mean, it was good to see Antonio Gibson being involved as a pass catcher, but we saw the script change for Washington this past week. Instead of them having more of a back-and-forth type contest in week one, in week two, we see more of a they're trailing. They need more pass catchers involved, and so that's where we saw the route utilization for J.D. McKissick start to spike up a little bit and so looking at the next couple of weeks they've got philly next week and then they got dallas the week afterwards games where we know they're going to be tight possibly trailing let's see what cooper rush can do with another start like under his belt so if i'm looking for at least some way to capture some of the past friendly nature that is the washington commanders at this point in the season i like jaden mckissick's role i like the way that they're using the trend upwards of his route utilization so i think jaden mckissick for my money is a guy that i want at least try and get on my rosters if i can all right. And how much are you spending in for McKissick? Uh, if I can get like 5%, like 5% of my okay. fat budget, not trying to spend a ton because like D bro is just saying, I mean, Brian Robinson right. like Money. should be coming right. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I can do that, 5% uh, is fine. Okay. Let's go to you for number two, Derek Brown at the RB position. Can, can we just talk about this for a second? In the year of our Lord, 2022, we want pieces <laughs> of a Carson Wentz. Right? Offense. Yeah. That's that's actually yeah. a thing Hold we're on. talking about yeah. here. Just, just so I, you look, look, I don't want to throw all the cold water, but I will say this. Watching that game yesterday... If you just look at the totals of Carson Wentz, you're you're freaking out. You're on tilt. You're like, oh my God, this is a renaissance. But if you're watching, there's balls that are thrown in weird directions, nowhere near guys. Like there's balls oh, that, where guys are diving for that balls. The trick play that they attempted. Oh, oh the there's... trick play where he threw it, and I'm looking at myself. <laughs> I'm watching it with, with my daughters, and they're like, who is he? They legit, my 10 year old goes, who is he throwing it to? And I said, no. I don't know, my dear. Yeah. I don't know. But that's the thing. If you're not watching, you're just seeing the lines on Carson Wentz. Let's not get too excited. It's been shootouts. It's been fun, but there's been a lot of imperfections too. And eventually a better defense he plays is going to take advantage of those imperfections. Uh, speaking of imperfections, let's go talk about the uh, Miami backfield. Cause you might've <sighs> found one here, T-Bro. Oh man, it's pain. It's total pain. Season kicked up to 11. So after week one and we see Chase Edmonds used in the clear lead role, mm -hmm. um, Mike McDaniel said, no, 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 not too fast, sir. <laughs> he decided to change this up totally. He's ne negated Chase Edmonds. When did he become a Bond team. villain? What just happened there? <laughs> <laughs> I should have done like the slow turnaround in the no, chair. Been like, hard I yeah, expect you to like die. Yeah. yeah, what a strange. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we can properly frame that. With Okay, if we're talking about Bond villains, the person that was sneaking in the side and he's going to take all the loot mm. apparently seems to be Raheem Mostert. 
14 touches, 79 total yards, so very Mostert-ish line. What Mostert did last week was he owned the early down roll. He had all the goal line uh, totes in week two, and Edmonds was basically negated to um, sexier Naheem Hines, which is really sad. So if we're seeing this Miami Dolphins offense, if they're going to continue to put up points like this, if we see them more positive game scripts, um, the outside of the fact that they were trailing for a lot of that game versus Baltimore, this snap share could have flipped even further in Mostert's favor. And when they get in positive game scripts, he could handily be the guy. So I, I, I would be picking him up. I mean, right now he's only rostered in 39% of uh, sleeper leagues. I'd be putting up, I mean, I got 12 to 15%. If you're hurting at running back, like what we're seeing out of Mostert and what we saw out of Edmonds, like if either one of those hold, like Mostert could be getting RB2 type of usage. So you're hurting at the position or you went wide receiver heavy and you're like, look, I need running back help bad. Mm-hmm. I'm not a, I'm not afraid to even go higher than that. Like say to spend like 17, maybe even 20% if you're super okay. desperate. Um, but I think 12 to 15 is a good number for him. And on sleeper, he's available in almost 60% of leagues too. That's, that's a that's little crazy. surprising considering mm-hmm. that's not a player I was in on, but I, I know a lot of people which just wanted to hedge their bets a little bit. That is another surprising number. All right, Chris, let's get to your last guy at the RB position. We want to talk about here. Who else you think is worth of an ad in week three. So I'm trying to turn my, the back end of my rosters, and I'm liking what the Atlanta Falcons are doing with Tyler Algier. I mean, the rookie coming in behind Cordero Patterson, well, he doesn't have the the targets yet. We're not seeing the passing mm. down like usage yet, but at least from short yardage work, like for uh, just in y- uh, yesterday, splitting some time there with CPAT, even on early downs too, mixing in there also with Cordero Patterson. I think he uh, just like maybe four or five like touches like behind Cordero Patterson like on early downs, and also third down usage. So he's starting to check the those boxes that we want to see for most of the running back workload. And so if we also start to see him being worked in on the goal line, even though that's typically like, you know, the Marcus Mariota, like workload or where he's typically used at, and also with Cordero Patterson as well, we can see that usage start to trend up. We're already seeing that in the second week. So they've got like a tough stretch of games, like moving forward. I think next week, who do they play next week? They got Denver, if I remember correctly. No, actually it's Seattle. Seattle. Like the, in Seattle. week three. Yeah. 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 So at least that's a good matchup. That's fairly decent. We can see that start to work up. And then afterwards, a couple of rough games. So if you can fit him in for about maybe 1%, 2%, see how things work out, see if he continues to trend up like in his usage that's a guy that i'm trying to get on the back end of my rosters okay he's rostered in less than five percent of leagues right now on sleeper that's kind of crazy i mean yeah yeah all right no uh, right am i looking at that correct no yeah i've got him at i had him at uh about 31 percent in terms of uh, third leagues or something mm-hmm. along those lines third leagues. Yeah. 31 yeah. sorry I, I meant to say less than half of the league sorry about that yeah uh not percent uh but yeah uh tyler algier i think a player that a lot of us were excited about and then uh we start to get less excited after that first week of Cordero Patterson. But that just tells you, you know, don't panic in week one necessarily and don't dropping guys to the waiver wire who are rookies because it takes a little time sometimes for that to happen. Uh, let's go to any other names, by the way, that should be on the radars. Uh, Debro, anybody else that popped to you that people should be adding as well? Yeah, I mean, I think we're talking about rookies that take some time. Tyrion Davis Price talked about him all off season. Mm-hmm. I'd be willing mm-hmm. to steer and fork over ten to twelve percent. You look at his usage last week, and we're talking about Elijah Mitchell's going to be out for a while. Um, him and Jeff Wilson could easily just take over the backfield by the time Eli Mitchell gets back. And TDP last week, thirty snaps versus Wilson's thirty-seven. They both ran ten routes. He got double-digit carries with fourteen, and he was right behind Wilson as far as goal line carries with three to four. So. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that the, if we're talking about a running back that's going to see in double digit carries and get goal line work, like he he falls into the end zone in any week. Heck, if he does it twice, he's going to be a top 15, top 20 running back, as well as being, a, I mean, at least in flex conversation. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, all right. Here's some other names too. Khalil Herbert's one that I keep, you know, I've been on this bandwagon. I told everyone to draft this guy. He's still floating around too, I think, in way too many leagues. You know, Benjamin. Uh, Chris, any of uh, those two guys also should be on uh, waiver wire radars this week? No, absolutely. I'm 100% in on, I mean, Eno, like we just talked about earlier, I mean, mixing in like there, like with Daryl Williams, so 100% with that. And Khalil Herbert, I mean, David Montgomery, for to his credit, I thought he looked good last night. 
But let's see what that workload certainly better to be. Yes. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Like run against a tough Packers defense. But overall, I think Herbert is definitely the guy to own. Like should anything befall like Montgomery or even just for that contingent value on a week to week basis? Because I'm thinking in this game plan, it sounded like Getsy wanted to come in and try and have at least a, a run first approach against this <laughs> offense, which for whatever reason, like don't ask me why they thought that was a good idea. But if we're talking about like what that workload is split is going to be like in some of their scenarios moving forward, I do like Herbert for sure. Yeah, and they weren't exactly uh, too keen on letting uh, Justin Fields throw the ball that much. Yeah, make no sense. Now, that, that's got to be something you correct. Like, I understand yeah. maybe you're trying your best to keep Aaron Rodgers off the field, but he's too efficient. Like, you got to – you the way you beat Aaron Rodgers is to go right at him. I think that's yeah. that's obviously – you hit him like, the, like, the, like last week the way the Minnesota Vikings did. Oh, yeah. And the way the 49ers did last year in the playoffs too, let's be honest. I mean, you get to that guy like any other quarterback. They go down, it's a different game, but – you got to just kind of go with them. Um, those two names, the same for you, Debro. Anybody else come to mind or are those with the same two? No, this is the same two. I mean, at least as of right now, we'll see what um, if injuries and things like that. And with our waiver wire article is already live at Fantasy Pros. Look so Fitz so and Bo and myself uh, work the, the the late night. We were up till about 1 a.m. getting all this ready. And that way people could start putting in bids fast and early. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll keep updating that. And if any injury news kind of sifts out, we'll add some more players there, too. We work harder so you don't have to at Fantasy Pros. Let's go. That's right. First to market. Let's go. Jacoby Myers. That's a guy who might be getting on the, some of your rosters. Uh, let's start with you here, D-Bro. Is that the guy who is uh, number one on your wide receiver list this week? Easily. And, and I'm going to call this out. He is only rostered in 39% of sleeper That's wild. leagues. That's Wild. Shame! Shame on you! Shame! I bet you. I bet he was a guy that was a very, you know, was a very popular drop last week. That would be it's, my mm -hmm. guess too. It's that's why that number insane so to me. Like, mm -hmm. how in the absolute hell is there a wide receiver that after two games, Joe, has garnered a twenty nine point two percent target share, and he is out? Well, on the waiver wire. I'll tell you how? why. It's not the right answer. It's because the Patriots offense He's is not Patriot. sexy. And he doesn't have touchdown equity. That's it. Those are the two reasons where people just they'll they'll let that go instead of taking the points. Quote it's unquote. Insane. Right. Top forty wide receiver last year. He's averaging nine point five targets per game. I don't have to make a massive case for this. Volume is king in fantasy. He's getting it. What? What? Why? Why? Why does fantasy have to be hard, people? Why? 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 Why, <laughs> why do you have to make it harder than it is? Well, look, and, and if uh, history is any indication from we saw out of the uh, secondary with Baltimore Ravens, he's got a good matchup coming this week, I would say. <laughs> yep. Yowza, uh, between the injuries and what was going on there. Uh, Chris, let's go. Uh, how, I'm sorry, one second. Jacoby Myers, how much are you willing to spend on him, though, D? I mean, I'm willing to be aggressive. Uh, 12 to 15% if you really okay. need because And here's the thing about it. His usage is wide receiver two type of usage. His numbers are going to sit it, most weeks wide receiver three territory, but if he scores a touchdown, if the volume spikes up, if you need a wide receiver three type for your fantasy squad, I'm willing to go even more aggressive. Like give me like 17 to 20%. If you really need a wide receiver and you're hurting. Chris, who's the number one wide receiver ad on your board for week three? Oh, for me, it's Greg Dortch. I don't know. I don't know what folks really need to see like from this Cardinals offense, like regarding Dorch in order to pick him up more, because if I'm looking at this right, I mean, he was only like 14% rostered. And I guess I, what more do you want? I mean, do, do you want, do you want a guy connected to a good passer? I mean, Kyler Murray, like for some of the like ups and downs of the past couple of weeks, still one of the best, uh, still one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Do you want a guy attached to a fast paced offense? I mean, Arizona still like top five, like top six in neutral pace. I mean, do you want to, I, what, what more do we really need? Like out of, out mm -hmm. of this guy in order to, and plus he's running those, he's getting those layup targets. Yeah. And last week he ran, he got like half of his targets from the slot. That that still remained the case here in week two touchdown in back-to-back -back weeks it's like what I, I guess i'm not really certain what people are did they think it was a fluke did they think aj green found the fountain of youth and he was just going to become like this guy that he was like a few seasons ago when he was still with my cincinnati Bengals. i'm not sure what the case was going on here so it's just i'm willing to be aggressive more or less because even with you know, the team saying like rondo more like might be back soon contend for targets in that same position like yada 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 but at this point like <laughs> we've already seen what dorch can be 
and he has performed well like in yeah. this position and he has the same like profile in terms of like a size and stature uh, compared to Rondell Moore so it's just like why even think about doing this one for one type swap if Dorch is the guy he's already performed well like in that same position mm. I'm willing to even bump up my original thought I was like maybe five to seven percent no let's go eight to ten percent at this point let's let's look at this from a rational perspective the team needs pass catches the team needs to continue to create explosives and Dorch has been that for them yeah, I'll I'll take Dorch all day long. Dude, I added Dorch last week. Uh, and it's because of my friend uh Derek Brown, who on our DFS show two weeks ago in week one was like, tell me right now, min salary, Greg Dorch, go lock it in. And I um, yeah. and you know what? I listened finally and last week, uh this past week I had some shares and it was it was the right thing to do. And I added him a couple of weeks where I had some injuries too, where I was like, look, uh, he's gonna get the target, he's gonna get some looks. He had the touchdown, that's great, that's a bonus. But uh, dude, all the stuff you're saying right there. 100%. And by the way, you can check the DFS show. We're doing it live every Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern on the Twitter machine and on Facebook. And if you miss it, go to fantasybros.com where you can check it out. And a lot of people are saying, where's the pod? Where's the pod? Well, it's live, baby. We just do it now. And you can always go back and check it out after the fact. Um, let's go to your second guy, Derek Brown, on your wide receiver list. Who might that character be? Well, Chris and I are just holding hand in hand, just strolling down the merry path right now. It's Greg Dorch, baby, and I'm with with everything that Chris said. Um, I, I'm willing to go seven to ten percent on him. Um, I think that he, again, we've seen the production. The only other thing I'm going to add to Chris's take here, and I love everything that that Alan sped out about him, was that you look at the next three matchups. It is juicy for slot oh, wide receivers the best cornerback point. matchups on the board against the rams and troy hill carolina whether it's jeremy chan or hartsfield in the slot or philly you do not want to throw against bradbury and slay so mm -hmm. what does this mean we could see three games if rondo moore doesn't come back and take this roll back we could see three games where greg dorch could conceivably lead this team in targets and i don't think that's insane to say no, uh, Seattle after that too. I mean, this yep. is definitely a, it's definitely a good matchup. All right. So if you're grieving on Dorch, give me the third guy on your list, Ebro. All right. Well, it's time to get nasty. It's time to go down the rabbit hole, but we need production and the man is producing. So I can't shade him any longer. Noah Brown, um, mm. 5% put in on him. Um, as far as a bid, he's only rostered in 4% of sleeper leagues and I get it's not a sexy name people, but you know what? We chase sexy production, and the fact of Noah Brown has seen a 19% target share over the last two weeks. He's averaging seven receptions and 79 receiving yards per game. You take the name away from this, mm. and this is a guy we would be spending even more money on considering the production he's putting up. But the name value and the stink around the Cowboys right now is going to land him on your roster for cheap. So you don't mm. have to put up a ton as far as fab bids, but you're looking at a wide receiver that's almost sniffing a 20% target share, and he's putting up a ton of points, playing all the snaps, running all the routes. So go get Noah Brown. All right, Chris, let's go back to you for your number two and number three waiver wire wide receiver ads. So... Again, like what Derek was saying, absolutely about like these next like few guys because we're we're diving deep at this point, and I think we the, are already. Yeah, <laughs> and I, but already. I think it's good process though because you if to. you're if you're diving deep and you're not spending a ton of your fab like on these on these players, mm -hmm. you're not going to wind up once we get into like let's right. say like week ten, week eleven, or something like that, and you're just completely out of money because we're making speculative ads at this point. We're trying to, I mean, we're trying to figure out what our rosters need. Teams are like actual NFL teams are figuring out what their identity is going to be on offense. They're still sorting stuff out. Mm -hmm. So it's okay at this point if you're only spending a couple bucks here and there on some of these players. It might look gross, but hey, you might get some reduction that you need. So I'm looking at Richie James. Richie James Jr. out of the uh, with the New York Giants because I'm at least liking the fact that he's their slot receiver at this point. And with some of the news I'm hearing yesterday about Kenny Galladay, what locker mm -hmm. empty, completely packed up like after the game was uh, game was done. What two snaps well, yesterday? In all fairness, two he snaps, earned those two routes. Two snaps, two, routes. Yo, yeah. <laughs> two, snaps, two routes. Brother had his locker cleared <laughs> out by the time they got. It's like it's it's. I, I cleared out for him. I yeah. was like, hey, Kenny, <laughs> like we're just like, 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 Tony like, being in the doghouse. Well, yeah, Kenny Galladay's around, looking like where's the doghouse at, baby? Yeah, and Wanda right away. Out. Yeah, and Wandell Robinson's hurt too. So, yeah, and I mean, Wandell's hurt too. And so, it's, if we if we've got a guy that's playing those that playing that slot role, the easy mm -hmm. layup targets for Daniel Jones. I know it's like it's tough to try and uh, tie yourself to Daniel Jones's arm, but if he is running those easy targets, 
and we're looking at at least over the next like couple of weeks they're not great matchups but at least their defense puts them in those negative game strips for what one percent two percent fab mm. i mean you could probably pick him up like on the cheap so at least for rich james three percent rostered and what third and uh third and routes run like this past week and as we just talking about things might be changing with the giants uh receiving core with whatever's going on with kenny galladay so i think richie james should be like should be a more a larger part of the offense just based off his production but if things are coming to pass like with this whole kenny galladay situation i definitely want him on my roster this was so frustrating is like you're just desperate for them to try to put whatever problems are aside with Kadarius Tony and just get him the football, please. Can we just yes. try? Yeah. I mean, if, uh, yeah. God, I am so annoyed at that. And look, Sterling Shepard, I thought was another good guy to add to going mm-hmm. into the week. They got the targets. Unfortunately, Daniel Jones was all over the place. Dan- Daniel Jones does this. Like he has a week where he looks good and you're like, Oh, look at that. Daniel Jones. And the next yeah. week you're like, Oh yeah, that's why there he is. I forgot. I hadn't seen him in a while. All mm-hmm. right. So that was your number two, Richie James. Who was your number three, Chris? So I'm liking Nelson Aguilar, like with the Patriots, because just uh, after two weeks now, week one, offense looked a mess. Week two, offense still somewhat in a bind, but I'll give them at least some uh, somewhat of a pass as they're going up against the Steelers pass rush with Mac Jones being somewhat hurt with whatever that back injury was. But still, we came into the week thinking, all right, well, after this, whatever rumor it was about Robert Kraft saying that they wanted Kendrick Bourne more involved in the offense, it, I mean, it has been, I mean, Nelson Aguilar, like in two straight weeks, I mean, second on the team in terms of targets run, also getting like the actual, uh, getting earning the looks like from Mac Jones. So it's looking like moving forward if this team is going to be at least league average in terms of pass rate over expectation which i think after this past week they're 17th or 18th which is okay that's fine Mm -hmm. matchups like moving forward not great but still like at least viable like for a pass catcher as well and again if we're only spending one two percent of our fab budget speculative ads at this point so if he's the guy that's earning some looks for mac jones Hey, I'll take and also create explosives on the back end too. After what yeah. we just saw it was yesterday, a great contested catch yesterday. It was exactly. Phenomenal. So it's just okay. like that's that's the kind of receiver I want. And Devontae Parker non-existent. I mean, he's yeah. had two targets in the two games. He has one reception. He has one fantasy point in half PPR right. right now. I mean, it is. I mean, all this stuff we heard about Devontae Parker being the guy that ain't true. At least not right now. So right. I don't know what's going on. He's gonna be hitting the waiver wire hard. All right, let's go to your last guy, Debro. Who is your number four wide receiver ad? Well, I stopped holding hands with Chris and I decided to take the Joe hanging fruit. Um, <laughs> Sterling yeah. Shepard. Um, again, one to two percent. He's only rostered in twenty one percent of sleeper leagues. I look at Sterling Shepard as the the discount version of Jacoby Myers. It's the same <laughs> bet. Yeah, I think that's because a really good analogy. Sterling Shepard got a twenty nine point four percent target share last week. This team, like we're talking about. Alan told you about Richie James. We're talking about Kadarius Tony. I'm telling you to put in men uh, bids mm-hmm. for Sterling Shepard. It's because somebody has to step forward. They're going to get volume. And yes, I understand that Sterling Shepard's stat line was gross. Six receptions for 34 receiving yards. In PPR, I'm sorry, but that still plays up, baby. If he got into the, the end zone, just with raw volume, if he mm-hmm. scores, and he, even if he puts up these nasty stat lines, Aren't we saying that like that's gonna, probably going to be high end wide receiver three numbers, if not maybe sneak into low, low wide receiver two numbers? That type of volume, it's the same bet as Jacoby Myers, except guess what? You're probably going to have to spend a little more for Jacoby Myers. You're not for Sterling Shepard. Just follow the volume, people. Yeah, follow the volume is correct there. And it's funny, Dorch and Shepard were my two most added players over the weekend when I saw all these nice, injuries for nice. free. Love because I, I think we all, as Chris was alluding to, you know, if you stay ahead of the curve on some of the deeper names and you're following some stuff, you take some shots for a buck or even in some leagues where you can get them for free on Sunday morning. Look, man, you just pick up these players and, and stash them and see what happens here. Chris, give me the last name on your wide receiver list. Now, I know that with the Colts complete, being in complete disarray yesterday, I mean, putting up a bagel uh, against the Jaguars. Here, I, I love this name. The Jags own the Colts. I what don't I don't know what happened. I mean, this is the same world that we thought, oh, Matt Ryan, like, coming to the Colts. Oh, yeah. I mean, AFC South champions, baby. We got this in the bag. And then now, the, what, what? I don't I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> but I like, I, I loved Ashton Doolin when he came out of college. He was one of those mm-hmm. guys that, I mean, small school dude, was it Malone, if I'm remembering correctly? Uh, whichever college that he comes so, from. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, if we look at the, his talent coming out of college, we heard at least the offseason drum beat that like he was one of the guys that the coaches were talking up as well. I mean, outside, of course, the Jonathan Taylor's, Naheem Hines, Michael Pitt, blah, 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 blah. But 
he gets in on his first game with both Pittman and Alec Pierce out, the rookie out of out of Cincinnati. I mean, six targets on what thirty, uh, like twenty five. I think he was like third in routes run amongst the rest of the wide mm-hmm. receivers that were still there. So I mean, instantly walks in and commands like a high target utilization in there. So it's like Alec Pierce, who is, was essentially supposed to be the, in the starting role with a similar position. I mean, if you look at if you compare the two, I think what Pierce is six three, like two ten. Uh, let's see if I'm remembering correctly, like Doolin's like what six one, like two, like two away, like somewhere in there. So about the same size, same stature, and they, they run a similar, they play a similar game. And if Doolin can come in and immediately command like that level of targets and actually produce like on those targets as well, again for one to two percent of your fab, I mean it's no lock that Pierce is going to continue to hold that role. He's a rookie; he needs to come along, learn the NFL game. So I do like like what his prospects are looking forward, assuming that this Colts passing game can get back on track but we'll see what I mean, we'll see about that for sure. well, i don't know if it can get worse uh but you know what to your credit too yes he did go to malone first of all well done ah, okay. i did double check you yeah, yeah. look at that chris allen so smart mm-hmm. but there's maybe some long-term appeal too because we keep looking who's the other guy besides Pittman, and i like people could take that paris campbell they paris know what they campbell. can do with it like i i mean i don't know how michael strong yeah I, I don't know but 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 the thing is Doolin's a rookie we've seen these guys sometimes emerge out of nowhere and make impacts there's a little bit more long-term appeal than people realize to that and re is rostered in what how many what's, what's the percentage on him with one one oh, percent yeah. so the yeah. people who were panicking yesterday and had Pittman and had nobody else in the deep league that's it like I mean come on like go out there you know five percent rostered it's it's crazy where these guys are so mm-hmm. you can throw a buck on them you know, and just figure it out. I mean, he he was zero percent roster before Sunday, and that jumped up to five. So, yeah. so he's still he is available. Let's just put it that way. In a lot of leagues, uh, speaking of available, I think we all need uh, some help at the quarterback position now. Uh, with Trey Lance out, I know some people didn't draft that second quarterback. It's funny, D bro. I don't know how many shows we did where we talked about if you have Trey Lance, you'd be very wise to make an investment in a car, in a cousin's. Yep. In somebody else with one of your last picks who's free out there in Aaron Rodgers if he slips too far, just to give yourself the out if performance was bad or an injury happened. And if you listened, then you're okay. And if he didn't, now you're hitting the waiver wire. So uh look, let's talk about it from a super flex standpoint. Let's talk about it too from you know just a regular single QB standpoint. Who are you looking at that has a good upside potentially week three that you want to play and you want to put some money on a QB? Joe, I know you love this player so much. I know, <laughs> I know that you've checked the Don't outline. You do and you're, it. You're Don't already you do it. ready to just push back, but I like Russian quarterbacks, Joe. You like That's Russian fair. quarterbacks. Apparently, you just don't like this Russian quarterback. <laughs> Marcus Mariota, man. Like, he's looked good over the last two weeks playing quarterback for Atlanta. Drake London has stepped forward as the number one. Mariota is looking to feed him, and he's throwing the ball well, Joe. Like, Come on, man. He was I can live with it in. this week against Seattle. Okay. But against well, Cleveland. Good. good. Cleveland, Tampa, and San Fran after that. Good luck. Like, there's a better okay. chance he doesn't. Well, I mean, we're talking about this we week. There. We're talking about streaming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. I, I, the thing that I, I can't get over with Marcus Mariota is the rushing upside is definitively there. Week one, got in the end zone, 72 yards on the ground. Week two, he still put up 16 more yards. The rushing is going to go back up. I think Seattle is a fantastic matchup for him to mm-hmm. exploit i mean they're eighth in yards per app yards per attempt allowed in week one we'll see where that shakes out after week two and they just allowed jimmy g to look like a pretty competent quarterback in the nfl so you're telling me that i can find a cheap konami code quarterback that's rostered in less than 20 percent of leagues on sleeper uh yeah i'll be happy <laughs> happy to roster him this week well, uh, I think I'd rather in desperation roster him than say Daniel Jones against the Cowboys defense. Oh, like that. absolutely. They I think that, that we can all agree on. Like if I'm just streaming, okay, it's a deeper league and I got to go Mariota over Daniel Jones, that's fine. I, I know you're going to laugh at me. I had to start uh, Jared Goff in a couple leagues. It's funny. I was just about oh. to ask you about that. My boy, say, EY. If him and Goff are out there, my, if him and Goff Goff are out there who are you grabbing? Goff is my third quarterback in a lot of super flex leagues, and I'm glad he bad. is. And yeah, I get it right, exactly, because I figured, look, it's not going to be pretty all the time. It's Jared Goff, but can he put up some points? Yes. Well, he's QB yeah. 18 week one, QB five yesterday. Um, again, we still got a couple games left, so we'll probably go click down a couple notches. But still, still, like Jared Goff ended up being a pretty good play yesterday. I think I would go with Goff. He's got Minnesota next week, then Seattle, New England, then a bye. And then uh, after that, a little bit trickier defenses. But I think Goff has a better run of schedule than Mariota does potentially. But Chris Allen, how do you see the quarterback waiver wire this week? 
I definitely like the call of the Mar- Marcus Mariota call from Derek. Uh, actually, Thank just last you, Chris. Just, just last Thank week. You. So just to just to back my boy up. I mean, he was third in all QB rushing attempts, like in week one, and like those. And so I, I know a lot of folks say QB rushing. Oh yeah, some of those are scrambles and blah blah blah. He actually tied Jalen Hurts in the number of designed runs in week one. Yes, I heard that Preach. stat from Derek Brown last week. Preach. And, and, and Joe didn't want to hear it then, and he doesn't want to hear it now. <laughs> I'm just saying, doesn't. like for all of the like the for all the bad sound bites from Arthur Smith, like in his press conferences over the past couple of weeks, the dude <laughs> is actually trying <laughs> to scheme up his quarterback and put him in positive situations. So I'm, I'm that's just, true. I'm, he, I'm just I'm that's just true. Saying, that is true. Saying. Yeah, uh, but the other guys, uh, obviously, with Trey Lance going out, I mean, the team quickly switched to Jimmy Garoppolo, and I know it was in a positive matchup. Everything just kind of flipped back, and they like they know how to game plan like with Jimmy Garoppolo like, under center. Mm-hmm. I think he uh, just last week, as of right now, since we got still got two games to go, he's second EPA per play amongst all quarterbacks, even just coming in as a pinch hitter like with Trey Lance going down. So I get it. But uh, next week, uh, what's got Denver, Rams, Carolina, and Atlanta, and Atlanta over the next like four weeks. I mean, at least two easy matchups. We'll see. I mean, they've typically been able to play uh the rams like fairly straight up like over the past like few seasons so they know how to game plan for that what it's traditionally been a tougher matchup but like derek was saying i mean with troy hill in the slot we know that they can take advantage of that particular matchup so if you can go out and get jimmy garoppolo at this point again 10 to 15 percent, i would be like somewhat aggressive of him because you do know that he's the starter you do know that then over mm-hmm. the next like three to four weeks they've got positive matchups so it's jimmy g for me right you you know what he's got you know his limitations yeah. as well i mean that's the thing you have to remember you know he's not the savior necessarily he right. is oh he's not going to get you know, a rushing touchdown every week like yesterday that's not going to happen no that is not oh. going to happen which by the way how pissed off was everybody that rolled with his that's uh, that's the dagger in the heart, right we're there. not that's talking about that i raised my hand that's, yesterday that's the we're dagger not talking about that yeah uh, yeah that hurt yeah that hurt, that hurt bad that i saw great. that and i was like well the first and he also had one deep ball too i was like who are you you're yeah. throwing deep balls and you're rushing who does that jimmy garoppolo because it doesn't look like jimmy garoppolo right don't worry He'll remind us mm. all, just like Daniel Jones reminds us. They Every always time. come back. Yes. All right, let's talk about tight ends to stream here. Uh, Chris Allen, you go first here on this one. Who's the tight end worth picking up this week? So I like Tyler Conklin, to be quite honest. I mean, the Jets like this. are surprisingly <laughs> good. Like, I, I don't Joe know. Joe Flacco what, season. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, go. it's really <laughs> just one of those. like sounded like Ron Burgundy. It was like, very Ron Burgundy. They're good. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah. what happened here? Like Jets where, where did Joe? Who, who is this Joe Flacco person actually performing well? But if if we want to try and at least look at this from a I don't know from a the from a quantification or like for an analytical standpoint, Tyler Conklin like just yesterday. I mean, forty one routes run at the at the tight end position, and like that's what I want to see like from my streaming tight ends. Like just take away the take away the jersey, take away the team affiliation, all that stuff. If you're telling me this tight end is out there running routes and actually earning targets like off of those mm-hmm. routes that I want to be invested in that particular tight end. And so if he's running tight if he's running those types of routes, that's like Travis Kelsey ish, like to, you know that level of routes being run. I mean, of course, we're not going to get the same production, but at the same time, it's like if they're using him in that fashion, give me that guy, especially in a pretty decent matchup like coming out this week, too. Yeah, just 8% rostered, so he is available. Uh, The tight end you're going to talk about here, Derek Brown, uh, this guy was actually my most rostered tight end in DFS this weekend uh, because I, I feel like this was starting to move in this direction, and then we got the touchdown out of him and got a couple other interesting looks in that game. It's Logan Thomas, so talk to me about Logan Thomas. I try to tell people, I, if you're tuning into the YouTube comment, uh, the, well, the YouTube content, uh, I came out with my top five stashes before the weekend. Logan Thomas was on the list. So I'm mm-hmm. trying to tell people, trying to help you get a jump. But Logan Thomas is still out there. He's only rostered in 20% of sleeper leagues. I'd be willing to put in up to 10% because the fact of it is we've seen Logan Thomas produce. We've seen him put up top 10 numbers. If the Carson Wentz led offense keeps doing these types of things, Mm -hmm. we want offenses that are going to throw and that are going to score touchdowns. And it looks like the commanders right now are doing those things. Logan Thomas, the other thing about it is we're seeing things out of Logan Thomas's game that we have not seen before in the sense that week one, we're looking at a player that was top 13 in yards per route run and air yard share. His A dot has been extremely but healthy. But he was always higher on the yards per route run, I thought, back in the even the he, two years ago when he was efficient. useful. Not efficient, but he had a lot of the he number of routes. routes. Yeah. He ran mm-hmm. a lot of them. Yeah. Unfortunately, no quarterback could see him, but which is weird because <laughs> he's a big guy. Yeah. You'd think that they would say, oh, look, he's this big guy who's open over the middle. But yes, he, he was one of the more, I say, higher route runners in the league, but 
it's nice to see somebody maybe starting to take advantage of that. And that's where Carson Wentz's bread and butter was. It was Zach Ertz all those years in Philadelphia. That was the bread and butter of the, of the Carson Wentz success level. Well, and for Thomas, I think there's actually a higher ceiling he can get to because he's still not like Allen's talking about Tyler Conklin, which I think is a fantastically yeah, short call. I love that call. But the thing about Logan Thomas, his route participation in weeks one and two is only at 63% and 60%. So we're looking at it. He's put up these two stat lines and he's not even running 80% of the routes. Mm -hmm. They're easing him back in coming off the injury. Right, injuries. He gets to yep. 80%. His numbers are also going to spike. So you're getting... Getting in, I think, at the basement, possibly, for Logan Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I'm all in. Let's go, baby. And he's going to be cheap again in DFS this week, too. I guarantee it. Yep, guarantee. Yep. All right. Uh, let's go to streaming Ds of the week. Uh, Derek Brown, uh, where are you going for the streaming defense? Apparently, I need to buy, like, some Falcons gear or something, because I just keep bringing <laughs> up all these Falcons players. Like, we've talked about, uh, like, uh, Tyler Algier from Allen. I've talked about Mariota. I'm going to tell you about their defense. Because their defense is doing things that I played a ton of them in DFS this last week that worked out well against a really good offense for the Rams. But you're looking at this Atlanta defense, and it's not the Atlanta Falcons defense of old. They have cornerback upgrades on the outside with Hayward and Terrell. They're also top 15 in pressure rate. I think that continues to go up because they're blitzing at a top 10 rate. So, yes, the Rams hung 31 on them, but they also got a sack, and they picked Stafford twice. So... We're looking at, oh, look at that, fellas. They get the Seattle Seahawks this week. <laughs> Geno Smith, come on down. Let's go. Yes, play the Falcons. And you're not going to have to pay up for them. Like, this is a defense you could legit probably pick up after waiver, waivers have run, probably mm -hmm. like on Saturday or Sunday when everybody's already been like, I picked up all the defenses. There are none left for you to stream. And you're like, it's okay. I got the Falcons, baby, and I'm not going to pay anything for them. When in doubt, attack the Seahawks. Uh, do you have a defense in mind, by the way, Chris? Just out of curiosity that you had your eye on? Yeah, Derek took mine, actually, because just looking at the matchups, and again, like this defense is not as bad as we thought it was going to be going in. And I, I for one, like for my money, I thought they were just going to, the entire franchise was just going to come in on vibes. It's just like, we've got the cool energy. <laughs> we've got the cool players. Like, this is just going to be cool, like throughout the entire season. But no, I mean, being able to like, like what Derek was saying, like being able to actually stymie like the Rams, like at like the, the right times and like get the turnovers and all that. I like what I was seeing out of the Falcons defense. So yeah, that's well, there's just, two that's ways to do it right chris i mean you either do it with the pass rush up top where you don't have good corners or if you have good corners and you can lock people down eventually your pass rush gets penetration yeah like that that's it there's two ways to play defense you either figure out which one you are um, yeah. and then there's some defenses that have every level at it mm -hmm. like, you know, those are the great those are the elite defenses for a reason yeah they have three different levels uh but uh, all right once again i will acquiesce again this uh the seattle seahawks to all of your communal love for the <laughs> Atlanta Falcons. Let's move on, shall we, gentlemen? Let's move on to our favorite top five waiver wire ads of the week. Chris Allen, give me the rundown one through five of the guys you want to add. How are you ranking them for those people who are in the formats on Sleeper and other places where they just have waivers run and no fab? Absolutely. So at least for me, I'm going to go with Daryl Williams up up top. Like while we're going to see and uh, wait and see like what the James Conner injury situation is move like moving forward. Greg Dortch immediately after that. Uh, just again, like for everything that we talked about regarding his role within the offense, Jimmy G afterwards, it doesn't have to be him. But I mean, I'm more of a streaming guy. And like, like what Derek was saying, if you can get Marcus Mariota too, I mean, there's, there are other options available. Nelson Aguilar, then Richie James, like after that, I think they're decent pass catchers. You can store at the back end of your roster or wait for waivers to run because who knows your league mates probably aren't rushing to the waiver wire in order to pick either of those guys up anyway. So you might be able to get them afterwards. So those are my top five. Okay, those are the top five for you. How about Der uh, Derek Brown? Who are you uh, rolling with at the top one through five? Brad Robinson's number one, was number <laughs> one. beating that horse till it's number blue. One. Okay, I, keep going. People, yeah. No, you're right. People you're gotta right. hear it. <laughs> like, they got to hear it, man. It's ridiculous. And, and I'm not going to shut up about it until he gets over the 60 70% mark because he should be. So, number two, Jacoby Myers talked about it. We chase volume. You want the volume for Myers. Raheem Mostert's number three. Uh, if he's going to get RB2 usage, that type of utilization, yeah, sign me up. Uh, Logan Thomas is number four. I think that, again, we could see a higher ceiling in the weeks to come for him. And if he revisits top 10 production for the rest of the season, you're going to be happy you had him. And Greg Dorch is number five. I love Greg Dorch. Again, I think he could be fed a ton of targets over the next three to four games. Some really good names there, gentlemen. Let's play a little game of keep or drop 
I'm going to give you some players on the fringe of being dropped uh, and their roster percentage over on the Sleeper app. Let's start with Kadarius Tony. It's been a frustrating couple weeks. He's 62% rostered, so some people are trying to stay strong. Derek Brown, are you keeping or dropping Kadarius Tony? Um, I would be dropping Kadarius Tony for any one of the top five, and I'm not, maybe it's premature. That's fine. Look, I, we're seeing usage out of other players. Like, mm -hmm. give me Jacoby Myers over him. Hell, even mm -hmm. possibly give me Sterling Shepard over him. Because well, it's Sterling just so Shepard's tempting because you start to route. see now yeah. more options and opportunity open up for him. But is it going to go to him? Mm -hmm. Canaries Tony, keep a drop for you, Chris Allen. I think it's the, I'm with Derek on that one. Because if it's a shorter bench like type of league and you really need the space, you need producers like right off the rip, then yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with that. Okay, Devontae Parker, 43% roster. Chris Allen, keep or drop. Get him out of here. Like, yeah, I, I can't. Mean, drop, it, bro. Yeah. Drop, 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 bye. Yeah. All right, this one hurts me in the field. Sky Moore, 58% rostered. Uh, D, bro, I feel like we're going to drop him and we're going to regret it. I really do. I, I do, really too. Do. I think yeah. we're going to drop him and I regret it. I don't want to do it. I, but but I, I, I look. You know what Again, this feels like? About this feels like Amon Ross St. Brown all over again. Today. Doesn't it? That's it? Doesn't it? It feels like, and, and, I, and I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be miserable and hold him for the next few weeks because I will not I let that happen to me too. again like it did last year. I had all I the Amon Ross St. Brown. And I dropped him right around this time, and I was so pissed off that I did. And it has all of the makings of the same problem. Like the Macho Man says, the cream rises to the top. Ooh, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's what's gonna happen here. Yeah. Like the the Skyward can't keep running routes behind me, Cole Hardman. So we need these fa fantasy points, baby. Oh yeah. Bring him in here. I'm just, I, I gotta hold him. I have to. Have to. Okay. Sky Moore, Chris Allen, keep it. I will make it three for three. I'll, I'll I'll give it one more week and we'll see how things shake out with Kansas City. The problem is I think we're gonna have to give it five more weeks and people Probably. Have the patience. Yeah. And then when he goes I'm on Ross St. Brown on everybody, we're gonna go, oh maybe wow. by that time I'll yeah. have a better macho man impression. Who knows? Ooh, so. yeah, George Pickens. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, sixty seven percent. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna keep him or are you gonna drop him, Allen? <laughs> Is off is off my roster. I, I can't at this point. I, do I don't wire. trust. I, I can't trust like Mitch Trubisky to support three like three pass catchers at least at this point. Like nah. All right, George Pickens for you, Derek Brown. Keep her drafting. That's what I kept telling people. I'm like, why are y'all drafting the third or fourth option on a Mitch Trubisky led offense? People are like in their preseason. Nah. Song. I don't know how much like, longer it's gonna be a Mitch no. Trubisky led offense. Did right? you see I mean, preseason, dude? Come on, man. Kenny like Pickett's a, coming. I mean, Winter's yeah. versus, coming versus the little zone and back of yeah. corners that are Come now on, working bro. at the local Dairy Come Queen. On. Yes, on, good your yeah. pickings. I love no, Dairy dropping. Queen. I wish there was a Dairy oh. Queen closer to me. I That's love a tragedy. So much. Isaiah Pacheco, forty-two percent roster keeper. Drop D bro. Drop. He's a clear RB three. Drop. Drop. Chris Allen. Hundred percent. Yeah. Get him off. Get him off the roster. I'd Man. rather. I'd rather take Daryl Williams at this point. Let, let Let me get some. Let yep. me stash a guy with a bit more upside. B Rob, baby. B Rob. All right. There this we comes. Go. I can't believe yeah. we haven't talked about this guy yet, but luckily we have this spot in the show. It's the sleeper waiver wire ad of the week, the pick of the week by me, Joey P. And for me, it's Garrett Wilson. Did we not see the 11 billion targets that went his way in this game? I understand. <laughs> like, I get it. But that guys, <laughs> like, he's only rostered in 45% of leagues on sleeper still. And this is a premium wide receiver, arguably the most polished, everybody loved wide receiver coming into the draft, but oh no, he's going to the Jets. Well, Joe Flacco, all he's done in two weeks is thrown the ball his way 22 times. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, volume is king. Uh, is it going to be as good as it was last week with the two touchdowns? No, I give the kid a lot of credit too. He came down hard on that back on the uh, on the sideline. And he came back into this game. He showed a lot of heart, a lot of courage. I know a lot of the Elijah Moore owners are very upset about Garrett Wilson's performance, and they should be. Because that's a dude uh, that right now, a little tenuous value. But my pick of the week on Sleeper, again, if you're not playing, make sure you go download that Sleeper app right now and transfer your leagues over to Sleeper uh, next year and this year if you can. Uh, but go pick up Garrett Wilson. Come on, let's go, guys. Uh, let's get to our listener mailbag from our fantasypros.com slash chat. Uh, it's free to join our Discord. But uh, if you want to be a premium member, don't forget, go to fantasypros.com and uh, go to fantasypros.com slash offers and make a deposit. And then you can upgrade and get the waiver assistant, and you can also get access to Discord. And here's a great question from Vlad45. Oh, wait, speak of the devil. Drop Elijah Moore for Garrett Wilson. Chris Allen, would you make this move? It's like you planned this. It's like mm. it's like you, it's like you set this up, Joe. I, I feel True I feel set up. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I try. 
I can't. Once a week, I, I try. I can't. Just a straight up, a straight up drop, like for Elijah Moore, like for Garrett Wilson. Like while it's it's good to see a a polished receiver. Like it's it's funny, a polished receiver that we all thought was going to be one of the be- one of the better wide receivers in this class, actually performing well. Mm-hmm. Who, who, who could have seen this? Who could have seen this coming? Let's draft George Pickens instead. Let's let's, let's overrate <laughs> situation. Yeah, let's 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 overrate situation here and yeah. just say it's going to be completely awful. I don't know. Let's look at Drake London too. I don't. know. Who knew? Who oh, knew oh you were friends all the way up until the end. Oh, yeah. Uh, who, yeah, who, yeah. Who knew this was going to happen? Weird. Uh, but I, I, Weird. I can't. I, I can't. Uh, no. I mean, Elijah all the Moore way is to the end of the show. Uh, Elijah Moore is is still is still a good wide receiver. I mean, he's still an efficient wide receiver. He's still he's still out there running routes as well. I I don't think after like a two touchdown performance is good for good for the rook. No problems it's there. The targets, Chris. That's what I'll, I'll just do. Twenty two targets that, in two games. That's why yeah. it's a, that's I'm why I'm going to push back against that one on this one. That, that's why I think it's a fair conversation. But at this point, I think I'd rather hold more than just a straight up drop oh, for Garrett Wilson. It's got chills thinking about two jet wide receivers on my roster at the same time. Derek yeah. Brown. I, I actually agree with Chris. Like you pick them both. You have them both. You find somebody else to drop, and you see how it goes because you don't know when Zach Wilson comes back how this plays out either necessarily. Who becomes mm-hmm. the favorite son? But Debro, would you make this straight up move right now if you had no choice? If you can't hold both of them, then yes, I would actually make this move. And for me, it really comes down to, I mean, we've seen back-to-back games where Garrett Wilson is getting the volume. True. And mm-hmm. with his routes going up, routes per drop back last week, I'm, I'm so, I don't want to be late to the party as far as Garrett Wilson in a full-time role this mm-hmm. last week. Got over a 30% target share. Like, well, what are you spending me, on that? What's that worth to you? I mean, considering the upside value from a rookie wide receiver that was a first round pick in the NFL draft, and he, he here's the thing, and I don't want to be late to this party, but for all the love that we had for Elijah Moore in the preseason, mm-hmm. what if we're wrong and Garrett Wilson was the guy we wanted? Like he's the guy we want Elijah Moore to yeah. be. That's possible. And a 30% target share in week two with Elijah Moore playing says volumes to me. I would be aggressive in getting Garrett Wilson. That's why he's the poster yeah. boy. I'm thinking 20 waiver call. percent plus. Like, yeah, he's yes. a cover boy. And yes. neither of you were on, had him on the list. Thank goodness I was here to save the day. Well, the, <laughs> the only reason I didn't have him on the list is because he didn't qualify for sleeper. He was above 50%. That's the yeah. only reason he's not yeah. my number one. He was one. at 45% last night when I looked. So he, he's, I he's he was way above up. for me. He was above, yeah. he was above 50, right. uh, 50 when I checked this morning. And I'll, th- oh yeah, because last night uh, people who ra- people who had those overnight yep. waivers or those free waivers where you could yeah. add anybody anytime, he would that guy easily, that dude got added <laughs> so easily my number one. And I put this in the waiver wire article. I mean, like I would be aggressive twenty to twenty five percent of your I fab because if he is Elijah Moore, if he is what we thought we wanted Elijah Moore to be this year, but it's Garrett Wilson, you're going to be happy that you put up the money for him. I want to thank my good pal, Chris Allen, for joining us again. Go follow him on the Twitter machine at Chris Allen, FFWX. Tremendous follow, tremendous content. Chris, you're the best. Hopefully, we'll get you on again very soon. Also, check out Waiver Assistant as well. FantasyPros.com slash MyPlaybook. That's where Waiver Assistant lives to help you figure out all the players you need to add. And, of course, upgrade now. FantasyPros.com slash Offers. And you can get the six free months of our premium product. Hang out with us at Discord. Use all the tools. Win all your leagues. You know how it goes. So that'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for Chris Allen and Derek Brown. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.